Hey, today I've got a quick video for you showing you how to set up and use the Specflow extension in Visual Studio. This is because some of the videos I've got coming up are going to use the Specflow extension. So I just wanted a little setup video here to help anyone that's struggling with it. But here we have a basic Visual Studio window and we're going to go to extensions at the top and manage extensions. And in the search bar, we're going to type in Specflow and click on the top one there and download. Now, it says here your changes will be scheduled. So what we actually have to do is close Visual Studio and you'll see the installer kick into life here. And then you hit modify. And now that's finished, we can close that and we can reopen our project again. Now what we want to do is go to the solution, right click on it and hit add new project. And now because we've got that extension installed, it's given us the Specflow project as a template. Now you'll notice it's come up with a load of stuff here and the things we want to look at, we want to first go to calculator.feature. Now this is the example code it's given us. It's going to get rid of the comments it gives you at the top. Specflow has a tagging system that you can use in your tests. We don't actually want to pay attention to that right now. So this is what Specflow gives you um, by default. We've got the scenario, which is the name it gives the test, and this is what's going to show up in your test explorer to identify it. We've also then got these given when and then steps. And then also we've got and, and basically and just does the same one as whatever it is previously. So in this case, because it follows given, it's also a given. And this is basically saying, given that this is our scenario, when we take an action, then this is the result we expect. And if you rebuild the project, it will now actually pick these steps up in relation to the definitions file. And because we've got the extension, we can right click on these and click go to definition. And that takes us to this step definitions file over here. Now, all of these are set up as default things. They're just throwing uh, exceptions at the moment because they're not implemented. But we can see it's got the steps for the givens and the when and the then. We've even got this symbolization here, which tells it that it's an expecting an input. And that directly ties in with this parameter passed in here. You can literally pass any number you want in here and it will detect it as an integer. The other thing I want to show you with this is one of the cool things that you can do with the extension. So if we copy this and we're going to make a new test and let's just say multiply two numbers. Now we can reuse these steps because all of the steps in here are completely reusable for any test. And in fact, they could even live on a different definitions file and we could still pick them up. What we want to do is we want to reuse these and we're going to say when the two numbers are multiplied. Go. And now it's grayed out because it doesn't actually have that as a step. What we can do is right click it and click on define steps. And now that brings up a window with all of the steps it's missing that it can't find and allows us to either copy them to a clipboard or create it. Now, because we've already got a step definition file created, if we hit create here, it's going to warn us that there's already something there. And if I hit yes, it's going to override everything in there. So what instead I'm going to do is go back to define and hit copy to clipboard and it will just copy that one function in. So underneath where they're added, I can now paste in where they're multiplied. And if I go back here and save those and it just wants to rebuild and now it's picked up a new step up as well. If you do happen to want to create an entire new file, you just need to make sure that the feature name up here is completely different to the one we've got in here. So calculator step definitions here is reflected by calculator there. So if you have, say, a completely new scenario, then you just want to make sure it has a new name there. And that's really useful because if you want to create your business driven development logic first and type out all these scenarios before you have any code, you can type out your given when then steps here and then just generate all the code driving it just from clicking the find steps. So there we go. That's all there is to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, you'll probably enjoy one of the upcoming videos I've got where we actually use Specflow to test some of our Azure functions. Thanks very much for watching.